Netscope Cloud Security is a cloud-native platform that is unified to secure cloud and web. One of the groundbreaking capabilities is the policy interface that enables you to easily create policies that cover use cases that span SaaS, IaaS, and web. To help articulate the strength of the unified policy engine, let's look at a comparison of how some legacy security tools would address a set of key cloud and web security use cases. We will compare three distinct use cases. The first is focused on blocking malware going to and from any cloud service or website. The coverage requirements for this use case are thousands of cloud services and potentially millions of websites. The second use case is blocking PII data go into any cloud storage, social media, webmail, or collaboration app, in addition to any forum, personal website, or blog. Now the coverage requirement here is thousands of cloud services and websites. The third use case is centered around allowing PII data to go to the sanctioned instance of Box. Since we blocked PII to cloud storage at the second use case, this use case enables it for the sanctioned version of Box. The key coverage here is to be able to understand the corporate instance versus other instances such as personal. Now that we have our use cases, let's walk through what it takes to craft policies to cover this with Netscope versus legacy security tools. Let's start the timer. For the first use case, we want to block malware to and from all cloud and web. The first step is that I will leverage Netscope's unified policy to select all categories across cloud and web. Next, I will enable malware. I will then select all activities, and I will choose block for all malware severities. The last step is to name my policy. Now that covers use case one. It looks like the legacy security product has some challenges out of the gate and actually requires an appliance for this use case. For the second use case, I'm gonna start by choosing multiple categories and we'll begin with cloud storage. The next category that we'll select will be social and we'll follow that up with webmail and then collaboration, followed by forums, and then last but certainly not least is personal sites and blogs. The next step is to bring in Netscope's award-winning cloud DLP. For the compliance template, we will choose PII. We will then choose post and upload activities. And for the action, we will choose block. And we will finish this use case by naming our policy. Now use case number two is especially problematic for the legacy security tool on the right. And this is because of the multiple products and interfaces required in addition to the big gaps that they have when it comes to app coverage. For the final use case, we will create one more policy. This time we will choose App Instance and select the Corporate Sanction Instance of Box. We will also bring in DLP and choose PII just like we did in the previous use case. We will choose Upload as the activity. Now for the action, instead of Block, we will choose Allow since we want to allow PII data to go to our sanctioned box instance. Since we blocked PII to cloud storage previously, we will simply move this policy up to allow this. Now I will save my policy, and it looks like I'm now done with the third and final use case. In only a few minutes, I was able to block malware to all cloud and web, block PII to thousands of cloud services and websites, and allow PII to go to our sanctioned instance of Box. 
Now, if you look at the legacy security tool, it required 27 multiple steps, a separate appliance, in addition to a cloud product, two separate DLP products, and they only covered 140 cloud apps versus the thousands that Netscope covers. They also got stuck on supporting instance awareness for Box, so they couldn't even cover that use case. At least they saved some time eliminating the use case.